flu season averages, um, the, whoops, sorry about that, we'll go back one. Flu season averages, um, this is coming from the Global Security, um, which is uh, globalsecurity.org. And basically what I wanted to do was over, take this, I made this chart up and over a span of 26 flu seasons prior to 2009, this graph represents the amount of times each month had a specific flu season. So you can see here that November had one season, December four, January had five seasons. And again, this is over a span of 26 different flu seasons. So you can really see that January and February is kind of February being that peak month to have a flu season. So if February is the most common month, it's really important to take all precautions prior to this month. And you know, flu is typically defined as a temperature greater than 100 degrees. And neither a cough or sore throat in the absence of any known particular cause. The next slide I have here is a virus bacteria resistance. Uh, you know, we're hearing all about the news so things called superbugs. So viruses, bacteria, and fungi, they've all learned how to, you know, rapidly replicate, rapidly mutate, and they're turning into things called superbugs. And superbugs are really infections that have created a resistance against any known antibiotic. So <clears throat> our unfortunate our overuse of antibiotics we're not eating well, we're not sleeping well, we have sugar overload, we've got really high stress lives. You know, this really depletes our immune system. So the problem is that most bugs are viral in nature, and then when we're given antibiotics to ward off secondary bacterial infection when our immune system is down, trying to fight the virus, you know, it's kind of this vicious circle. Now I need to mention here that not all bacteria are bad, right? So some microbes live on, live on your skin, and really, and they protect us from harm. So the drier areas like your back may have fewer microbes, but moister areas such as your groin, such as your armpits, uh, the palms of your hands and the soles of your feet, they may have more bacteria. In the human digestive system, there are you know, different species of friendly bacteria, which are, take part in a really important digestive metabolism. And they, they're vital to the metabolism of food, the production of enzymes, they help to produce vitamins, you know, and there's certain bacteria in the gut that help to manufacture vitamin B, even vitamin K. Um, and there's a recent study that I read about where a serotonin levels are uh, made in the gut. Um, we think of serotonin being in the brain, but um, there's a direct correlation between uh, the gut and the brain, uh, and that would be for depression issues as well. Um, you know, bacteria live in the digestive system of most of our herbivores, and basically they need this bacteria to help break down cellulose, and that cellulose is their dietary fiber, which then gives them energy. So you can really see how important bacteria are. Bacteria are their kind of own little entity. Viruses, unfortunately, well, <laughs> that for them, for them, it's unfortunate, but they actually need a host to live in, live on. And you know, infections caused by bacteria would be things like strep throat, tuberculosis, urinary tract infections, diseases resulting from viruses that we know could be things like chicken pox or the AIDS virus. That's more common. Big problem here, we've become a nation of germaphobes. 80% of all liquid soaps on the market today are antibacterial. Um, I've got a big problem with the whole environmentally damaging thing, and I put a picture of this really cute little bottlenose dolphin, and I got this article from uh, this uh, Beyond Pesticide Journal, and it was uh, written uh, through uh, environmental pollution. And basically what it states, this particular article showed that the presence of triclosan, and we're going to get into this later, but the presence of triclosan, which is your major antibacterial uh, agent found in soaps and whatnot, it's found in the, it was found in the blood of plasma, the, I'm sorry, the plasma blood of wild Atlantic bottlenose dolphins. And and their aqueous solution around them. So the waters that they were swimming in also were contaminated from this particular chemical. And you know, the bacteria is really killing our wildlife and killing our waterways. And it's, you know, potentially when you think about the water being back into our systems and our drinking water, it's coming back into us that way. Antibacterial products have become a $1 billion industry. And, you know, in 2003, there were fewer than 200 antibacterial products in the market. Currently, unfortunately, there's over 3,000. But what can we do then that's natural? So thieves, the thieves' land that Young Living has created is 
uh, really an amazing product. I was getting sick a few days ago and a sore throat and a little bloody nose. And uh, I used thieves and uh, diffused it in my home and put it on my feet and put it in some hot tea and drank it down and sucked on some lozenges and other thieves lozenges and um, within 24 hours I was uh, just fine. So what's in this thieves? What makes it so awesome? Uh, clove, uh, you know, clove is used as a as an anesthetic, and it was used back in uh, when uh, older dentists would use it to help numb their gums uh, as an analgesic. And uh, they, particular here, use the clove bud instead of the clove leaf. Clove leaf and clove bud smell exactly the same, except the clove bud has more of a therapeutic chemicals in it. Um, however, many commercialized products in the market right now are using clove leaf, and the clove leaf is not um, not therapeutic. It just smells like clove. Lemon is used as an anti uh, antimicrobial, excuse me. And uh, research done by Le uh, Jean Valnay showed that vaporized lemon essential oil can actually kill meningococci bacteria within five, 15 minutes. Uh, typhoid bacteria. Uh, typhoid bacilli in one hour and staphylococcus in two hours. Um, and it's really the major constituent being something called D-limonene, and that's what makes it so antimicrobial. Cinnamon bark here in this case, uh, they use it as an antiseptic. So um, studies have shown it, that cinnamon has large zones of inhibition, um, like we talked about before in that aromatogram. And it could really help with uh, fighting hospital-acquired infections, and most of us know those as a superbug MRSA. And this actually comes from the uh, Journal of Cranio Maxillofacial Surgery in 2009. And I can provide any of you with any of these resources if you're interested in finding out about them. Uh, rosemary being an antifungal, and uh, the eucalyptus uh, radiata is a uh, very strong antibacterial and most eucalypti that we know of is really great for respiratory systems when you're really congested it acts as something called a mucolytic and that mucolytic means that it uh, kind of softens that congestion and it allows it to be a little bit more fluid so you can uh, you know blow your nose and get it out oral health care really important um, you know your digestion begins in the mouth so we have from you know a clean mouth would have about 300 bacterial species and a dirty mouth has about many billions of bacterial species and your know, research shows there's a connection between uh, stomach distress with poor, poor oral health care and this comes from the journal of clinical periodontology at the uh, tokyo dental college and uh, research also shows that there's a connection between periodontal and gum disease uh, sharing the same bacterial pathogen that causes inflammation of the arteries, which then leads to heart and vascular disease. Essential oils really, in this case, kill microbes that cause tooth decay and gingivitis. Uh, many toothpastes use large particle abrasives to clean the enamel. However, these large abrasive particles can actually cause significant damage and wear down on the enamel itself, so it causes the tooth enamel to decrease and you enhance your risk of dental decay and tooth loss, unfortunately, in that case. What are some common toxic preservatives in many of our tooth care products? This would be artificial flavorings, colorings, food dyes. Um, one of my biggest ones here that I want to talk about is aspartame. And um, aspartame is a sweetener which is marked under uh, the trademark name of Equal and NutraSweet. Um, there's over 6,000 consumer foods and beverages sold in our country and around the world um, and this it includes diet sodas and instant breakfasts and breath mints and sugar gum uh, sugar free gums and um, laxatives and shake mixes and instant coffees and wine coolers and yogurts I mean chewable vitamins for children has aspartame in it and I personally have um, before I even started studying the effects of aspartame Anytime that I would eat something with aspartame in it, I would have a respiratory issue happen immediately. So I'd have trouble uh, taking a big breath in. So I know that aspartame is in my food um, when I have that reaction of not being able to fully take a breath in. And uh, I can tell. So um, 
you know, upon ingestion, though, 